Yo, what's going on everybody? Today I'm gonna to give my race recap of the Credit Union Cherry Blossom 10 mile and I'm gonna just get right into it because I tend to make these things really long-winded so hopefully I will keep this one relatively succinct. I'll start with the night before in terms of the runner flat lay. Uh, I had the same ASICS singlet that I wore for the LA Marathon and also the Chicago Marathon. It's that beautiful ASICS Breathe singlet. It's the version one, which I've been told is not gonna be made available for sale, but V2 is coming soon or so I've been told. So hopefully you guys will be able to try that out as soon as it comes out. For the shorts, I went with the Janji half tights. Uh, I wanted something with pockets because I did bring two gels with me. Now, this seems to be uh, a bit of a controversial move. A lot of people were commenting on the fact that I brought two gels for a 10 mile race. It seems like it was a little bit excessive, but I always figured I would probably want one and if I ended up only eating one and carrying one the entire way, I didn't think it'd be that big of a deal. So I think I thought I would go with two. I did end up using both of those and I felt like that was fine. I didn't feel like I was eating too much. Um, it's not a starvation contest. It's not a contest of how little fuel you can take on. I always think of races as how much fuel can I take on without it causing any GI distress. If it has to be one extreme or the other, it doesn't, it should be right in the middle. But if it has to be one extreme, I'd rather be on the borderline of eating too much than on the borderline of not eating enough. But that's maybe just me. For the shoes, I went with the Metaspeed Sky. I'm really loving the new color of the Metaspeed Sky. It's a version one, that shocking orange colorway. Uh, and it's a shoe that I absolutely love racing in. I elected not to bring gloves. I did pack gloves with me for the trip, but I said I wouldn't bring them, even if that meant my hands would be a little bit cold for a large portion of the race. Temps were going to be in the 40s. And so I thought like, maybe I need gloves, maybe I don't. If it was like a regular run at home in Chicago, I probably would have been wearing gloves, maybe in some relatively thick ones. But for a race, I felt like I might not need it. Plus, if I was gonna be trying to eat a gel while running threshold pace for an hour or a little bit more than an hour, I definitely wasn't going to want to have to fight the gel and gloves and still holding my selfie stick and all that kind of stuff. So I elected to go without gloves. It ended up being the perfect choice because I think the temperature was just a few degrees warmer than it was predicted for the day. And that ended up making things just about perfect weather-wise for the day. And overall, for the day, the weather was perfect. It was overcast in the mid to like uh, high 40s uh, and almost zero wind the entire time. For this course, it has almost no hills. There's a couple of bridges that you go over and so there's a very gradual uh, incline on some of those bridges. But other than that, there's only one hill at mile 10. Uh, so it's not ideally placed, but as soon as you're done with the hill, you go right back downhill and right into the finish. So um, it's not terrible. So it's a nice flat and fast course that I definitely enjoyed. For the warm up, we got up early and the hotel we were staying at was relatively close, about a mile and change away from the start line. So a bunch of us got together and we decided we would just jog over to the start line as our warm up. Once we were there, we kind of like met up with everyone else in our group. Everyone kind of split off and did their own thing in terms of how they wanted to warm up after the jog over to the National Mall area. I did a couple of drills, which I don't normally always do, uh, but I did it before the LA Marathon and I felt like that worked out well. So I decided I would kind of like keep the streak going and make it two races where I did that. So I did like some high knees, butt kicks, A skips, B skips, um, some regular skips, uh, and then ended with a couple of strides, literally a couple just out and back. Nothing too crazy, just enough to kind of like make sure everything's ready to fire on all cylinders. Then I got into the corrals and the corral situation there is really easy to navigate, but also a little bit chaotic at the same time. So like getting into the corrals was super easy. The I was in the yellow corral, which was like kind of like right after the elites. Um, and But it was really long and there was paces everywhere from uh, like seven, seven minutes per mile, I think was the fastest pacer, um, to eight minutes per mile and I think 8.30. We're all in the yellow corral. Some of those times were also in the red corral. So it was a little confusing, but not unheard of to have that kind of thing. Um, so I kept walking, trying to figure out like, where should I stand? So I kept looking at some of these pace flags and trying to figure out where I needed to stand. And I, I kind of got to the front of the yellow corral. And then I kind of looked around and I was like, these people are very fast and I should not be standing here. Also, Megan from Believe in the Run was like kind of standing up towards the front. I'm like, I know that I do not want to go as fast as her. I can't go as fast as her. So I was like, I definitely need to go 
further back. Now, in terms of the pacing strategy for this race, um, I'd been thinking, you know, I know Megan's got Boston Marathon coming up two weeks from the Cherry Blossom 10 mile. And so I was thinking, I don't know what kind of workout she has planned for this day. I don't know if she's going for a 10 mile like PR or if she's going to go 10 miles at marathon pace. I'm thinking if she's going at 10 miles at marathon pace, that might be a pace that I can actually keep up with her on. So I was thinking if that's the case and I'll kind of stick with her. Then if she's going her half marathon pace, then I try to just stay with her as long as I could. And then if I fade at the end, then I fade. Uh, but, you know, we'll try to stay together for as long as possible. Turns out she was going to be running six minute miles. That was her goal for the day. So I said, I don't think that's going to be a plan for me. I'm going to have to um, uh, sit back a little bit further and let you go and do your thing. She tried to convince me to just go for it. She's like, you know, you could do it. And I was like, I don't, I don't really think I can. I think she just wanted a running partner or someone at least to pace her for a little bit. Um, but uh, fortunately, uh, Frank from ASICS was able to uh, hop in and fulfill those pacing duties for her. Uh, and they did a fantastic job. They came in uh, at 59.33 for the day. I feel like they hit every single split like clockwork. So they did a fantastic job on the day. But that was a lot further ahead than I was. So I, I, I lined up further back. And at the beginning, I felt like there was just a lot of space everywhere. But then once like the national anthem was played and then the women's elite field went 12 minutes ahead of the men's field and then the general open start. Um, and so once the women left, then all these people started filtering in through their corrals. And the fencing was like the kind of fencing that people could kind of like shimmy their way through. And so everyone was like not wanting to stand into the corral until the absolute last minute. And so when that last minute hit, what felt like a nice spacious corral all of a sudden got very tight and there was so much nervous energy in the crowd and I, I'm very susceptible to that kind of thing. And so like all of a sudden I just felt like it was very like draining to just to be in the crowds and like listening to everyone talk about their paces and their pacing strategies and what they're worried and nervous about and all that kind of stuff. And so I was just like, this race needs to get started already. And fortunately it very soon did for us as well. We were off and running 12 minutes after the elite women start. And uh, it just kind of felt like, boom, we were all going right at once. And it was very congested at the beginning. There's a lot of people that run this race and that start area is not very wide. And so it felt very congested yet at the same time, everyone went out hot. So everyone that I was standing around I knew that they were shooting for anywhere between 6.30 per mile and seven minutes per mile, just because there's so many conversations that I could hear around me. And yet, as I was going, and I was thinking originally, I'm gonna start at my marathon pace around 6.50, maybe 6.45, and then just generally squeeze down for the entire race. But what ended up happening as soon as we went out, everyone like rushed past me really fast. So I thought, oh, I must be taking it way too easy. And so I started going out and just kind of like trying to find my spot in here and figure out where do I fit amongst all these people who said they were going to go out doing like anywhere between seven minutes and 630 per mile. But as I looked down and finally got a little bit of room so I could look down at my watch and we were, I felt like we were running like 606 is the number that I remember seeing on the watch. So we were coming out definitely hot, at, but at the same time, I felt like it was just, we were all just kind of like jogging and just shuffling our feet. So it was a very weird sensation. I feel like there was a lot of adrenaline at that race. The first thing that I remember after that, after looking at my watch is that I looked up and all of a sudden there was a, just an SUV sitting on the side of the road and it caught a lot of people by surprise. And so if people were running and all of a sudden, boom, they would split apart and pick one side. Maybe they would jump into the middle of the street or they tried to shimmy between the SUV and some like snow fencing that had been put up by the race. Fortunately, I was able to get through it without any problem. And then kind of at that point, I felt like the race uh, was moving. And I tried to kind of figure out like who was trying to do the same thing I was, who was kind of running at my pace. And I found a couple of people here and there, uh, but then it would always kind of feel like I'd find someone and then we'd run together for a little bit. And I was like, all right, this is my group. These are my people. And then they would either pick up or slow down a lot. And I felt like, I don't think I'm the one that's doing all this weird pacing, but I just felt like no one that was around me like w could like find a pace to be at. Everyone was kind of like just all over. It's kind of like when you're on the highway and you know you're driving on cruise control and all of a sudden you see cars all around you and you're like, what is everybody doing? That's kind of like what I felt, but I was like, 
I don't know. I, I know that this race has a lot of locals from the DC area that run it. It's a race that has a lot of repeat runners that run it. So I'm like, these people must know what they're doing, but I don't know what I'm doing. But all I know is I'm just going to keep running my pace and, and running the, the race that I had originally planned on running. So we come through the first 5K at 20 minutes and 17 seconds, which ends up being 6 minutes and 32 seconds per mile. So pretty close to kind of like... Um, what I was ultimately thinking for the day, uh, if I was feeling good, what I was going to do was try to shoot for 65 minutes. And the reason why 65 minutes kind of like sticks out to me is that, um, I ran a marathon back in 2010. It was a couch to marathon. It was terrible. I kind of swore off running for a while and I didn't really start running again until my running buddy was like, Hey, let's do this race. It's coming up. And I think it was maybe 2016. I don't think it was 2015. It might've been 2016. And it was the Soldier Field 10 mile run. I remember running it at a time where my running buddy finished, was able to go to his car, uh, get changed and then jog back to the finish line. And he was still able to see me finish. And I remember at the time, I don't think they did do it now, but at the time they, uh, the, the Soldier Field 10 mile race had like an American development kind of like program or like a kind of like a sub elite field. I don't think the race really draws elites, but it had a sub elite field. And uh, the main thing that it did was is a separate like warm up area. You know, you get to be in the tent for a little bit longer and then they walk you right out to the front of the race. And so I thought that that was really cool. And the time to be uh, eligible to kind of like ask to be put into the sub elite field was 65 minutes. And for me coming from a time where I think my first 10 mile race was like 120 or 130, something like that, um, 65 minutes felt impossible. And so I thought now at this point, if I can run a 65, I feel like that'll have my running come a lot of ways full circle. And, you know, it'd be a good way to kind of look back at all the progress that I made. So I was like, maybe a 65, but I'm two weeks out from my last marathon. So I was like, 67 is probably more like it. Let's see how it goes. If after the first couple of miles, I'm feeling good, let's go for 630s straight all the way through. So by the time I hit the 5K point, I was like, all right, I'm gonna go with this 630s plan. And coming in at 2017 was just about right. I had no idea in my mind, um, cause I can't do math like that on the fly. Um, but I felt like if I could do three 20 minute 5Ks, that'd be an hour. That means I have time to do uh, the last like K and change like 1.09 K, uh, in a handful of minutes. That'll give me right around 65 minutes. So I felt like 20 minute five Ks is a good place to be at. And I felt good, but I felt like I was still holding myself back quite a bit. I felt like a lot of people were passing me and I was just letting them go. Cause I was like, it's too early to really start squeezing down for me. Cause I didn't really know how much would be left in the tank. Running one five K is one thing on marathon legs, but like running two more 5Ks and then some was gonna be another. So at about the four mile mark is when I took the first gel, maybe three and a half miles to four miles, somewhere in the areas when I took the first gel, I took a Martin calf um, and I ended up not taking any liquids on the course, which I thought might be a bad idea, but then I was like, it's a short enough race where I'm not worried about salt depletion. And it was cool enough out that I wasn't worried about like, uh, you know, not having enough fluids on board or sweating too much. I don't really think I sweat really all that much during this race. And so um, I didn't originally plan on not taking any fluids, but that ultimately ended up what happening happening by the end of the race. But the first gel I took was at about mile four and I'm feeling good. I'm kind of like eating a little bit as I go, holding the gel and running, um, chewing on it a little bit, letting it kind of sit in the cheek a little bit and just kind of taking my time uh, and just continuing it on and slowly starting to squeeze down a little bit, not intentionally, but just kind of like letting myself flow a little bit better with the race um, and looking at the watch and seeing kind of like where I'm at. If I ever got down to like under 615, which I might, you know, here and there, then I kind of pulled myself back. And then if I saw myself getting towards 630, then I kind of like, you know, picked myself up a little bit to just try to get a little bit under 630 for kind of like my cruising speed. And still things felt really good for that entire time. We have went through a couple of hairpin turns, which, you know, kind of hurt my feet a little bit. My feet are, I guess, 100% recovered from the LA Marathon. So that I did have to slow down a little bit more than I would have liked to just to take it a little bit easier on the feet. Um, but 
things were running smoothly and uh, I was feeling really good through 10K. At 10K, um, the split for that second 5K was 20 minutes and eight seconds. So I picked up uh, a few seconds in that second 5K and still feeling really good. The scenery also was really fantastic throughout the race. I mean, you're running around the mall, you're seeing like the Washington Monument, the Jefferson Memorial, and I've never run on that bridge before. I'm not sure if you, I think you can run on it, but I've never run on it before. So it was just really cool to kind of like look to the left and look to the right and see like these two like absolutely iconic monuments. Uh, so it was really just fascinating to see that. Um, in that second 5K, uh, I was able to find a couple of people that I was able to stay with. Uh, and I was like, all right, this is the group. These are the people that I'm going to stay with. These are people that are probably trying to run around 630, uh, maybe a little bit under that for, for the race. And so I'm going to stay with them. Then we hit the 10K mark. And that's where an, a, a couple of people started to kind of like fall off the pack. Um, and I think at about mile eight, a little bit before mile eight is when I took my second gel. I just took like a regular Martin. Um, and again, doing kind of the same thing, not like taking it all in kind of like one swig, but kind of like chewing on it a little bit by bit and kind of just taking my time. I wasn't really in a rush. Around mile like seven and a half or so, you go around this one uh, kind of like little peninsula. I think it's called Haynes Point. And um, it gets really quiet out there. I, I think it's really hard due to road closures for, for spectators to get out there as well. And it's at kind of a weird spot. Anyone that sees you at Haynes Point is probably not going to make it back to the finish to see you finish. So it was really quiet out there. But this is the Cherry Blossom 10 mile race. And uh, that stretch is lined with cherry blossom trees. And they were absolutely stunning. A lot of people all throughout the weekend were kind of saying that the trees do look great, but a lot of the blossoms had blown off because there had been really strong winds and storms the week before. Um, but the, fortunately for me, the trees were just absolutely lovely to look at as we were going down Haynes Point and then kind of coming back around. Uh, so it was a really nice distraction at a point that it got really quiet and it really starts to feel like, okay, now, now we're getting to do some work here, it's starting to feel a little bit more difficult. Um, and then as we were kind of like rounding the turn, I ran into Ryan from Believe in the Run and uh, I got to talk to him a little bit. I'd never met him in person before. Uh, so it was nice to be able to do that. And again, it was a nice distraction. Well, it's nice to meet a person, uh, but it was also a nice distraction as well as we were just chatting uh, in very kind of like rushed breaths because we're all working hard at that point. Um, and at that point when I met him, I think it was really great timing for me because it was also kind of like, that was the hardest mile of the race because somehow in my mind, I lost track of the miles. And so when we were at seven and like three quarters of a mile, I was like, all right, I'm ready for a push. Are you ready for a push? We're going to push at the next mile marker. And then we're just going to go into the finish. I was like, you ready? He's like, okay, let's do it. But then we saw the mile marker and I was like, oh, this is mile eight. Never mind. Let's just keep doing what we've been doing for another mile and then we'll push, you know? So um, that mile, mile eight, just felt really long because mentally I was already up just a mile away from the finish and now I was two miles away from the finish. So like it just felt like the race just got longer on me. So that was a tough one for me. And uh, that's when I started kind of thinking back to the LA Marathon and kind of how I was hurting at the end of that race and how at that race, when I was really hurting, I kind of forgot all of my kind of like race strategies, race motivation, race kind of um, um, mantras and all that. And I just felt the, the hurt of the race. And this time I was like, oh, I remember what to do. I've been here before. And so I started, you know, repeating some of my race mantras to myself, some of my like kind of coping strategies um, to deal with what felt like my body was hurting, but really it was just my body was getting tired and I'm trying to like distinguish those two feelings. Um, just because the body is starting to feel fatigue doesn't mean that your body is going to fail you. So that was kind of like one of the things that I was trying to remind myself really strongly um, that this is how it's supposed to feel, that the pain is just a metric, just like the power number, the heart rate, the, the pace. Um, these are all just kind of like indicators. They're not signs of impending doom. So you can keep pushing and it's 
everything's normal, everything's looking and feeling how it's supposed to feel. And so I was able to kind of just kind of keep pushing through that. And I kind of was like welcoming it in a way. I mean, I didn't really love it, but I was kind of welcoming it in the way as thinking of it, all right, this is training. This is going to be practice for later on um, for my next marathon, you know, when I'm really hurting and I'm trying to reach those goals. Um, these are the kinds of uh, experiences that I need to build on. And these are the, the practice simulations uh, that I need. So that way I know how to deal with things when I get punched in the face late in in a race, so to speak, you know, so, um, that's the stuff that I was really focusing on, on that mile eight. Cause that mile was really, really hard. Fortunately though, at that point, like there's another aid station and then you're leaving that, uh, that point and you're getting back kind of like towards, uh, the national mall. And there's all of a sudden a lot more people and it's a very welcome time to see a lot more people. Um, so that was really good to see as well. A lot of running clubs were out there. There's a lot of running clubs in the DC area and they were all very well represented, not only in the race, people showing up with the team kit, but also on the sidelines too, people cheering and getting out there and supporting the runner. So I definitely appreciated all of you guys uh, that were out there for the race. Um, but it really started to hurt. And then at a certain point, I know that I'm close because I see kind of like the Lincoln Memorial and I know we're finishing over at the Washington Monument. It's kind of over there, you know, but um, then you hit this big uphill or what feels like a really big uphill. I think it was like maybe like 30 feet, but it felt like a giant uphill. And I was like, okay, I know we passed the nine marker, nine mile marker a little while ago, but I don't know how much is exactly left in this race. I mean, I could have looked at, you know, the watch and stuff like that, but I'm like, I'm not sure if it's still the point where I can really start pushing yet. Uh, I don't know how much I need to save for this uphill. And that's kind of like something that comes, I think, with experience uh, and, and being able to run this race. Uh, and before I forget, at some point we passed the 15K marker and the third 5K of this race was my fastest one. It was a sub 20, it came in at 19.49. So I'm feeling really good about that, that I was able to put down in 19.49 in my third 5K of a race. Um, because uh, I just didn't think that I had that in me. So I was really um, surprised by that and feeling really good and encouraged. But then we hit that hill and that hill was very discouraging. And, and you could see the whole, it's just a straight uphill and you could see it. Now, it's not a straight uphill, but the uphill is gradual, but it is straight. So you could see all the way to the top of it. And it, it looked to be very long. But the nice thing is like at some point, in like the middle of the hill, there's a sign that says 400 meters to go. And for all of you who might be race directors or are on committees at work putting on races, I love the 400 meters to go sign and an 800 meters to go sign to also be appreciated because then it just lets you know, all right, here's now where I can let it rip. Whatever I got left, put it down right now. This is the time to let it all out. And so once I saw that sign, I was like, all right, it's just kicking from now on in. Um, I'm thinking at this point, all right, 90 seconds, 90 seconds of working really hard to see what you can do. Uh, and the nice thing was once I got to the crest of the hill, it was a very nice downhill on the way back and that I definitely enjoyed. So I just felt like I was flying down that last hill. Uh, and by the time I finished, you kind of like went from the top of the hill to the finish kind of really quickly. So I kind of wish that I'd started my kick somewhere on the uphill a little bit further. And if I ever run this race again, uh, that's definitely something that I'll remember is don't be scared of the hill. Don't be worried that you're going to burn yourself out. There's no race left to burn yourself out for. The uphill is pretty much the rest of the race. And then you could just fly down the downhill on the other side. So that'd be the one tip that I give to everyone uh, who's running this race uh, is to like let it out <laughs> at that last uphill because you're pretty much at the finish. Crossed the finish line and didn't quite hit my um, watch right away. Uh, and then when I did hit it, it was 104.45, but even that had me thrilled because that me meant that my actual chip time was gonna be a little bit faster than that. And it came in at 64. Uh, 64 minutes and um, 23 seconds. So uh, quite a bit of a PR, I believe from 2018 might've been the last year that I ran that Soldier Field 10 mile. And that's the only 10 mile race that I've ever run. I've ran that race three times now, I think. 
um, and 71 minutes and change was my fastest. So quite a big difference, but it's been, you know, four years, uh, since I had, uh, run a race a, almost four years since I'd raced a 10 mile race. So, um, I was definitely due for an update on that PR and I'm feeling really good about it. I felt like I executed a very disciplined, if not overly cautious race, um, so I also feel like mm, I left a couple of uh, seconds, if not a minute uh, or so on the table. And I'd love to be able to get a chance to run that back and do it again. Uh, but, you know, that's not possible this year. But maybe in a future year, I'll be able to attack something closer to a 62.30, maybe under 62 minutes, maybe even under 60 minutes one day. Um, you know, sky's the limit at this point. I'm feeling really good about it. I love that 10 mile distance. Um, I think I might even like the 10 mile distance more than the half marathon distance, just because um, it's a lot of just getting to run fast and you only hurt for like a little bit, it seems. Um, but I guess that just means I could probably hurt a little bit more and run it a little bit more aggressively if I feel like I'm not hurting that much on a 10 mile race. But it's a definitely a fun race. Um, uh, at the finish, I was able to catch up with Frank and Megan and I found Ryan at the finish as well. We waited for Thomas to come in. He came in just a little bit after us and um, it was pretty chill at the finish line area. They kind of let us hang out. As long as we weren't like blocking stuff, they kind of were cool to let us kind of hang out and wait for everyone else that we knew to come in. So uh, that was really nice to be able to just enjoy a finish. I, I mean, I just love finish line areas and like a pet peeve of mine. I understand why they do it, but I don't like it when races are like really aggressive about moving people through the finish. Um, I understand that this is safety consideration there, but I just like, I just love watching people as they come in and finish a race. It's just such a good feeling that I've experienced. And it's so great to see it on other people's faces as they're finishing. And we were able to do that at this race too. And like the moment I finished, like the skies opened up and it was just beautiful sunshine. And I was like, this is like the best day ever. Um, so I was just in a fantastic mood. Uh, but then after a couple of minutes of hanging around, kind of like talking with people, meeting some people, taking some selfies and stuff like that, the clouds came back over and blocked the sunshine and it started getting really cold. Fortunately, I was able to get a space blanket from the race and we were then going to head back to the hotel and cool down by just kind of jogging the mile uh, back to the hotel. At that point, showered up and then we headed out to brunch with uh, all the people that had come for the race uh, with the A6 team. Uh, and so we were able to get some breakfast, had some uh, Bloody Marys, had some other drinks and some fantastic food. And we we're just able to like share all our stories from the race. And it was just a really great way to kind of put a cap on the, the festivities for the weekend. Uh, I had a really good time at this race. I had a really good time running in DC. Ru DC is definitely a running city. Um, I think that uh, it doesn't get enough credit for how crazy about running people are in this town. I've seen it before, like other times when I've been in DC uh, for work and I've just gone out for a run, regardless of what time or day it is, really early, really late, there's always other people that are out there running. Um, and most of the people that run this race uh, are a lot faster than me and are just from the area. So like in a small condensed area there is a high concentration of very fast runners that's what it is like in dc but of course there's runners of all different levels of skill and experience in the sport so i just think it's a really fantastic place to run i had a, a a really great time in DC. Thank you everyone for the hospitality and showing me such a great time in your great city. I can't wait to come back. Um, and one final thought before I go, I'm thinking, you know, with this race, um, just coming two weeks after my marathon, it was really a test of a couple of things. Um, uh, but the main thing was, you know, how ready am I going to be to kind of take another crack at, uh, sub three, uh, for the marathon. And given that my body felt pretty good, um, going through this race and even now a couple of days later, I'm still feeling remarkably good. I mean, knock on, this isn't wood. We got to find some wood somewhere, but, um, knock on wood, but I'm feeling really good. I do think that I'm ready to kind of get back in there and put in one more block, uh, of trading. So maybe I can get an early summer marathon in there. I haven't finalized it yet, but, um, I have some thoughts on that and it's going to be relatively soon. I mean, not right away. So I will be able to put in a little bit of work. Um, but 
It's going to be uh, coming up soon, so stay tuned. Once I get that finalized, I'll let you guys know exactly what that race is. I've got a bunch of other races coming up in the meantime, too. Uh, so it's going to be uh, a fun spring and summer. I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, staying healthy is obviously my paramount concern, uh, and hopefully we can put in some good work and get some good results along the the way. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of this video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I will see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?